Welcome to the celebration of you. I'm your host, Holly Dowling. I'm thrilled to share with you incredible people from all over the world who are living and leading extraordinary lives. From overcoming immense adversity to discovering the secret sauce to leading with courage and grace, their stories are going to bring you hope and inspiration. Now, let the stories begin. Well, I am just so excited to feeling like I'm sitting on the couch and having coffee with like an amazing new friend, but feel like we've gone back for years and years and years. So for everybody that's joined me today, I want to thank you because you get to meet another extraordinary human being and uh, Lisa Beth Thomas out of Austin, Texas. Lisa Beth, you're on with me, aren't you, my dear? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I love that. That's such a Texas. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Well, the name like Lisa Beth, I kind of have to have that. I kind of like it. You're right. But I love the ma'am. You're like, okay, that was taxes. Um, (laughs) You know, it doesn't, it feels like, I don't know, it's just crazy, but it feels like we've known each other for years and it's literally maybe been six months, but it was an immediate connection. Yeah, we met in the elevator at the uh, event in San Antonio, and we immediately, and then we became fast friends in the elevator, and then we kept bumping into each other, and, and uh, when things were coming up at that conference, we would always find each other with the, you know eye contact to go, yep, got that, yep. <laughs> yep, yep, and I, yep. I mean, we went to, you're right, I completely forgot about the elevator. I forgot about that before the event even started. Oh my gosh. See, this is why one of the greatest lessons people can learn right now is, Just always be ready and open to the souls and the people that the universe brings to you, right? You never know what can happen. Well, you are extraordinary, and I'm so excited for people to get to know you. Um, Even in the amount of time I've gotten to know you, I feel like, and we'll share this with people, but some of the deepest connections we had that have both been very transformational for us. But will you just, uh, I love to brag on you. You have your own amazing company that when I got to know you, I was like, wow, you know, you're fabulous in the marketing, advertising, television, and video production. You have a company, an advertising agency in Austin, Texas. Tell us a little bit about your company, what you love to do, just to kind of get some color around you and how long you've had your company. Sure. Um, I've had my company 13 years, which is really very exciting. And we started out as a video production house, but we did some work, uh, commercial work for a very large agency, uh, GSD&M. We did some work for them. And the G and GSDNM kept telling me I needed to become an agency because we were so creative. And I was like, I have too much ADD. If I'm doing more than just my thing, I just know, you know, I just know myself. Well, with that, it, they kept referring advertising business to us. And I, st- I and, and then they would be like, man, that would be fun. Oh, that would be a really fun account. And so about a six count, six accounts later, we realized we had become an ad agency thanks to, to the, the big ad agency. And we still, that's one of our sources of, of new businesses from them, which is very, very cool. Um, but so we have amazing local clients. We have state, we have national, we have international clients. And my passion is the creative side and the producing side. So it's been really nice as we've grown that I have a, an amazing team that handles the, the operational side, the media buying, all that end of it that um, helps businesses grow. I mean, obviously, we, we, we call ourselves dream makers because we love yeah. to help people's dreams come true, whether it's business or personal branding. And then my side of it is producing the commercials, coming up with the creative for the spots or the print, as well as producing for television documentaries and movies. So I've had a pretty eclectic world, which is really, really fun because every day is different. Yeah. Well, and it's exciting because even before we started the show here, um, just filling me in on some of the exciting things that have just come into your world, into the work you're doing. And it's very eclectic. You get to do, it sounds like you get to flex your creative muscle. And, you know, I want everybody that gets to listen to this to know that one of the first things I got to hear Lisa say, she didn't even, Lisa Beth, you didn't even realize you said it that day. And then you said it again today. But what you love is to make people's dreams come true. You are a dream maker. And, um, but you know, there's a part of this that I want people to realize that you haven't taken this for granted. You show up with such joy, with such life and getting to know you, what I love about people like you. And it's kind of the choice I made years ago. It's, and you know, this, you know, my line, I refuse to live in woe is me. I want to live in wow is me, but you've come from some serious adverse situations. And I think that there's a lot 
that that has to do with the strength and courage that you have now to just stay in this place of joy. And will you share with us, you know, kind of take me back into some of the background of some of the more pivotal moments in maybe your life that have maybe encouraged you or kept you going through some of the darkest times? I am um, on the, on the personal side, business, business side, I've always done very well professionally, but it was really interesting is that I didn't realize and, and we're being completely transparent here that I didn't realize how beat up my self-esteem was. And I don't know, and I'm not going down the path of, oh, it was my parents. I'm not doing that because, you know, we all, everybody does the best they can with what they have, the tools that they have. So I'm not, I'm not going there at all because it wasn't that, but I just, I had a very strong insecurity and I didn't realize it until, until basically in my fifties did I realize that that was driving my decisions and relationships and my relationships, um, some were abusive, but if I go back now and look at it, it was pivotal to get me to the strength where I am today. And being able to each time stand up for myself and stand up for my family and my marriage that I just, well, uh, five years ago on July 3rd, actually, uh, left my husband and bought him out of the business, um, was very emotionally and, um, the, probably the most negative person I, I can even imagine and how hurtful he was. And I finally took the stand of, I'm just not going to take this anymore. I just, and, you know, I looked at my kids' faces, I looked at, you know, and what it was doing. And I, be, you and I talked about this, Holly, that we call it, even though a piranha eat really, really quickly, mm-hmm. but it's one bite at a time. And when you're in that situation, because if, if you, as you know me, I would be the last person in the world you thought had gone through all that, yeah. right? Because we put on a mask, we put on a face to get through the day to day. But what happens and when you're in that situation, if anybody's listening that's in that situation now will relate to it, is they take a nibble out of your self-esteem and who you are every day. And finally, you realize you're a skeleton of who you were. You're like, where did I go? And it happens so slowly they don't realize it until something wakes you up. Yeah. And what woke me up was I was staying in the marriage because of the business. And I was staying in the marriage because we were in business together. And what will happen? What will happen to the employees? What will happen to our clients? What will? And I, I was staying for that and it was killing me. And literally one day I woke up and I went, I can be a waitress my life is not defined by mm. this. I can go work at HEB and bag groceries. And when I realized what I was holding on so tight for was killing me, mm. suffocating me. And when I let go of it, of, you know, I can get a job at a TV station. I could go move back to Michigan. When I let go of that, oh my gosh, it just, it changed everything. And I literally walked into the office and said, I'm buying you out of the business. I'm, you know, I've already filed for divorce. We're, we're, and it could, just gave me that strength. Yeah. And um, that shifted everything. What do you think was that moment? I mean, when you, and I love this, and thank you for being just so real and pulling back the layers of the onion, because honestly, Lisa Beth, there's people that are listening that that one person, you and I talked about this, that one person when people like us are willing to get real and honest, that yeah. needs to hear this and get hope. And when you think about, you know how you just said that moment, you said, I could go get a job doing groceries. Like you finally let go, right? Yeah. What, what was that? What happened? Was it internal, external? What was that epiphany that finally, it's kind of the old enough is enough. And we all kind of have our own end of the rope, right? It kind of hits right. you, but was there a anything specifically, or was it literally you woke up in the morning and the piranha had eaten everything and there was nothing left and it was either like die or pull myself back together? What was it for you? So, and this is really funny because, well, it's not funny, but it was funny, but I got a butt call from my ex <laughs> and um, he was with somebody that he shouldn't have been with. Oh, no, and, not laughing, but I am. <laughs> no, but it's funny. And, and he was with somebody that he shouldn't have been with. And he also, obviously, it wasn't the first time. And I was just, and it was a five-minute call. And he kept saying to the person that he'll just say that he didn't get my message because I had left him a message. And he'll just say, I didn't get the message. you know. And, and I heard what his plan was. So a few minutes later, he called back. And called me 
and didn't realize he'd done that. And, and anyway, so bottom line, I, I called him out on it. He denied it, of course, but I was like, go look, go look. You butt called me. So anyway, so <laughs> the point where I'm going with this, Holly, is that there had been so many signs along the way that I, I had to laugh out loud that I thought God has been telling me, here's a sign, here's a sign, here's a sign. And finally, I think he went, oh, dear goodness, Lisa Beth, let me just call you so you can <laughs> yes. see. Gosh, how tense are you? <laughs> you know? Let me just make a phone call. And I literally think it was God going, girl, you know, you're, it, this is not worth it. Yeah. And and it was really funny is because he denied it and denied it, denied it. And then he came back from a trip and, and somebody had taken a picture of him later when he said he never did that before, ever, ever, ever. I never did it again. Somebody took a picture of him um, at a strip club. And it was really, really funny because, again, I thought God is once again, OK, now here's a picture. So I'm making sure you got off. You know, you know it's, it's it's so true, though. Wait, I'm loving this story because you're right. I never heard about the butt dial thing. But, you know, no. in the biggest – and see, you know what I love about you is, like, you can even say this. You're not living in a world of holding animosity and grudges and because there is a philosophy about that, too. You know, the more resentment we hold, it's like a toxic poison to us. I always say you let the – black widow bite you or the rattlesnake and they move along and you're living with the venom and you right. chose to not live in that toxic place anymore. But I love the signs. I mean, I always said, I'm one of those people too, Lisa Beth, that I, you go, okay, I don't, I said to God one day screaming, standing in a path, like waiting for a sign. And I said, I need a billboard. Posty notes aren't working, right? You know <laughs> Like, <laughs> and call me, yeah. call me on my cell phone. Yes. <laughs> but the fact is, you're right. And I think for a lot of people, let's face it, we get, you know, they say that our gut feelings, our intuition, they're so real. And yet over time in life, you know, from when we're children, we start learning to shove them down, tuck them away. We don't listen. We see all the signs and then it takes like a wake up call. And fortunately for you, as much as that stunk and sucked to have to have that wake up call like that, it was the blessing in disguise. And, um, you know, to be around you and to look, to be in your presence, you truly come from the wow is me. You don't live in a woe is me, but I think your story, it's so powerful to let people know that if you're living in this, right. And we don't know what everybody's life is like. And, you know, you were saying to me earlier, you were at a board meeting yesterday. And I think this kind of sums up this story, but back to the masks, you know, you can right. be in a room with women or men. I mean, I want to talk to both genders because right. I speak a lot to men and women and you sit in a room and, you know, we all have that mask on. No one really mm -hmm. knows what's going on in your life, right? We all have something. And, and a, w a woman said yesterday, a good friend of mine, Sharon Bacon said, you know, people say, I'm going to put my face on, especially women. And she said so many times, I don't mean it that way. I, I'm not talking about putting my makeup on. I'm just putting my mask on because of what's going on in my personal life. I have to have a different face. And that is so, I mean, and so we looked around the room at each other of like, okay, we all have, everybody has something. And even if I, I think about it when I'm in the grocery store, that when I'm at the checkout lane and, and I think about the people in line or the check or, you know, what's going on, you know, and I, I hope that I, I can be a blessing with a, a hello, a smile, you know, a God bless you, whatever it is, because it's tough out there, you know, but we have to. And I love that you said I'm, I'm coming from the wow is me, because one thing I do want to say is that I, as crazy as it sounds now and again, not every day, but now and again, I, I send him blessings and mm. wish him well, because he was very important for my journey. He was very important for me to get to this point. And if I hadn't had that, I'd still be back there somewhere. So I thank him for that. And yes, it did suck. It was horrible. But um, mm -hmm. I'm so much stronger for it. And my head's clear. And I've... I'm in control of my life. I was, we were laughing about the other day. Someone said, you know, when you've let the crazy control you for so long, you know, someone said to me, um, so you let a sociopath dictate your fear. And I was like, yeah, who's crazier? Me or him? Yeah. Wait, that's a great line. And when you hear it like that, you're like, ooh, I am in the tank with the piranhas, right? What am I right. thinking? <laughs> right. You, you know, I would love two things I'd love to ask you because I just think this is such a powerful story. And if you were to go back, what advice or words of wisdom would you give your 25-year-old self? 
I would completely give myself uh, advice to myself would be, you are fabulous. You don't need to settle. You, I, I was truly looking for, 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 for love. I was looking for that relationship. I wanted to be married so bad that I, I'm married so bad. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> that just fell out, didn't it? <laughs> that just fell out. I want to be married so bad. I'm married so bad. And that is awesome. Yeah. I can't remember that line. Let's tweet that. But, yeah. And so it's um, to really, to, to look back at myself and say, Lisa Beth, oh my gosh, you were so worthy of love and respect and kindness. And, um, and know that. And the other thing I would, I would say to myself is, um, trust your gut, mm. really trust your gut. And, and, and the, cause the, the signs were there, but I, I just thought I could change them or I deserved it or whatever my thinking was at the time. Mm. It's so, I love that because it's so true. And if we could go back, it's all, all this life wisdom from life experiences. But, um, I think that's great for people to hear, especially for the younger people out there. And I would love to, um, you know, when you think about, because you do come from such a place of extraordinary joy and you live and I can only imagine what it's like to be in your presence when you're working and running your company, because I bet your teams are amazing, but how do you celebrate yourself? Like, what do you do to celebrate your life and your passions? What do you do to celebrate you? Do you take time for you? Do you have a specific, like, I mean, I, my, it's mandatory, my Holly time and I block it. I put it on my calendar and I do the things that I love. I love reading inspirational things. I love going into the pool, working out, going to the spa. What are you doing to celebrate you? I, I, I do the same actually. And, but my, my big thing to celebrate me, I used to not have a lot of downtime at all as we all go through those phases in our careers. But I, nine times out of 10, will get in the pool at night when I get home. And even if, if it's for 15 minutes to swim and float, you know, and play mermaid and just kind of let the day wash off me, you know, and be still. And that's when I sit there and all of a sudden we'll start going down my gratitude of the things I'm so grateful for. I'll look at my house and I'll see my kids and my grandkids in my house and I, and the dogs and the trees. And I just start going down the list of what I'm grateful for. And so I end my day really, really peacefully. And there's always wine involved. So, <laughs> no, of yeah. course, let's talk about that. <laughs> always a glass of wine there. But, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of how I, I end it. And even the nights that I get home a little later, I'll, I'll really try to get out there and, and have that time. And you know what I love that you added to that, not just the wine part, but the, um, the gratitude. I think just if we could all build the muscle, it's so easy to be caught up in like what's not working. And yet when you come from a place of just pause and look around you and look at your children, your grandchildren, your home, your life, your company, your business, how you get to give back, you know, ending a day on gratitude, wouldn't that be an amazing gift for people to start to take on? Like it takes no money. It's a matter of like a few minutes, right? And just be grateful. Um, I have to share with you before we wrap up, um, because you were talking about, we're talking about the mask and everybody's, you know, everybody's got a story and it's something that I've shared in a podcast of mine from years ago, but it's, you know, I believe that every person out there from the people that cut you off on the road to the people, like you said, at the grocery store, we don't know what's going on in their world. And by a simple gesture or a smile, like you might be the person that just gave that other person a gift of hope or a smile could give them joy. And do you remember Mr. Rogers? Do you remember that show? Yes. Oh, yes. I love that. I remember, the Eddie, I, I remember the Eddie Murphy version of it too, which was <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> <I'm> live. <laughs> <laughs> that actually was really good. Um, yeah. Well, and I have to say, it's something that has always stuck with me. And I just have to kind of wrap this up with this in a minute, because you're going to love this. But every day, and a lot of people don't know this, Mr. Rogers carried in his pocket on a piece of paper, a quote, there isn't a person you couldn't love if you knew their story. Wow. Yeah. And I think we as human beings have a privilege to live on this earth and be as kind as we can and stop putting labels on people's foreheads. Just because they're grumpy doesn't mean that that's a bad person. We don't know what's going on in their life. 
Correct. So uh, I think that's beautiful. I knew you'd love that quote. I was like, oh, Lisa Bass is going to like this one. Yeah, this is all you, girl. Well, you know, I okay. thank you. Thank you for just getting honest and real and also getting to give hope to people that you're doing amazing things. And, and I just love having my my group of girlfriends in Austin that are all kicking butt and yeah. taking names. But if people want to learn more about what you do, because um, you do stuff all over the country, it's not like it's just in Texas, but tell uh, will you tell everybody how to get in touch with you and how best to learn more about your company? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my email is lb, as in Lisa Beth, at lbtj.com. And my company is LBTJ, which is, um, like I said, an ad agency, marketing, video production. And um, we are really, we're really excited. Our two newest clients are celebrity chefs that we're getting ready to handle all their PR, national PR. And uh, we're, we're building two television shows for them. So that's pretty exciting. And then um, you can always call the office because we're here, 512-637-5285. And even if it's just... Um, you have a question or something's come up and then someone's like, you know, what, what should I do in this situation for marketing? Cause I, I do share a lot of times the things to avoid. Yeah. I have, I have a talk I do on the 10 advertising mistakes to avoid because I usually get the call after those have happened. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody says, Oh, what do you think? Please. I have no problem. If your friend's a Holly, then you're friends of mine. Oh. Oh, you're so sweet. And you know what? I remember you telling us about that blog you wrote. And I think what's great about that is, and I mean, come on, and I want everybody to know, go to your website, go to the company, get access to Lisa Beth. And actually, Lisa, I have to tell you something. When we met, I only knew you as LB. And I'm laughing now because do you remember it was like after three days that I went, it's Lisa Beth? I just thought your name was LB. <laughs> and I never really knew what it stood for. <laughs> I know. And that, that started when I was 24 or five years old, I worked at an ad agency and there was two Lisa's. Um, and, and it was driving my boss crazy. Cause he called Lisa and we both go, what, you know? And so finally, cause he knew my middle name was Beth. He goes, okay, so you're LB, you know, and her then just Lisa. And so it's been LB since. So that's funny that you didn't know my name. No, I didn't. And I just love it right now. So I'm like, <laughs> as I'm listening to you to tell everybody the, the name of the company and you, but I just thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving your time. And I know you mean it. You can pick up the phone and call her office. Um, that's Absolutely. just how you are, LB. You are authentic and there for everyone. So thank you. Well, I appreciate it. And so are you. And I we're going to hold you to a, a get together with the Austin Tribe since you are now a, a, a member of the, of the girls club over here. I love it. You know, just a phone call away and I'll be there. Yes. <laughs> Thank okay. you, my dear. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me for another awesome celebration of you. If you were inspired by this story, please share it with your family and friends and hashtag your story matters. I'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment on iTunes and absolutely please come to my website, hollydowling.com. Leave a comment there too. And while you're there, pick up your free gift. Most importantly though, just remember that your life is a gift from God. What you do with it is your gift back. Thank you.